Hello friends, welcome to the DM's Craft, DM Scotty here. Now what if I told you today that you don't need to make terrain out of styrofoam, okay? You can make great, awesome looking terrain without using any wire cutters, any expensive tools, just cheap stuff you probably already have around the house, right? So I'm gonna show you today how to make cheap and durable terrain for your game table. So spend a few minutes with me, DM Scotty, and we'll, I'll show you how to do this cool technique of paper mache terrain. Hello craft friends. Now old time DM Scotty's watchers will know this technique, but I want to show my new friends how easy it is to do paper mache terrain. Okay. Now I'm sure you've learned other ways to do paper mache with flour and it's messy and all that stuff. You don't need to go to that trouble. It's super easy. Just get some Elmer's glue all. You want to, I prefer this over the school glue. The school glue is not nearly as good as the glue all. Uh, so make sure you get Elmer's glue all. It's super cheap if you get it in a gallon jug like this. So what I do is I prepare it and get it ready for the crafting, okay? And that's super easy. I just bought these uh, two like ketchup bottles at the at the Dollar Tree, so you can find these kind of things anywhere really. Uh, once you get them, mark halfway up the bottle, just measure and mark halfway up, because you're gonna do a 50-50 solution, and that's just the easiest way to do it. So I just pour in the glue uh, from a funnel until it fills halfway up. You know, it's viscous, so let it all you know drain into the bottle. And once it does that, just fill the rest with water. Fill the other 50% with water and shake it really well. And you are just good to go with the perfect uh, paper mache uh, craft glue, right? This is all you need. You don't need any kind of fancy glues or anything with clays or anything like that. This is all you need. So now let's go to my table and I'll show you how easy it is to use this glue to make all kinds of cool paper mache terrain for your game table. All right, friends, the first thing we're going to make is a rock, and I cut this piece of cardboard out for the base. And I'm just going to use paper towels, right? Now, normally you would use uh, newspapers and stuff, but I just like to use regular paper towels. I'm going to wet them with just regular water, regular spray water there. I don't like to use the glue in the sprayer because I don't like to gum it up. Now, let's put some full-strength glue on there, and then start covering it with TP, okay? I'm going to, you see, I'm double, kind of double-plying it there. And just lay it over the top and uh, you can see it's sort of sticking but not very well but once I spray it it really starts to stick and you can kind of push the sides in with a brush sometimes it wants to stick to your fingers and uh, yeah we're getting a really nice shape of a rock there and just add a little more you want to do you want the outer coat to be nice and strong so this is easy. You're not really making that big of a mess. I'm just using a cutting mat. This is a great thing to use. You can just wipe it off when you're done. And right at this point, I'm just using water. So there's like no, absolutely no mess here. <laughs> you know, it looks a little messier than it is. I kind of scrunch it up a bit to get the nice indentations in the rock. And look at that. Doesn't that look nice and natural like a rock? Cool. Now we need to harden this thing. So I'm going to use my 50% water, 50% white glue and just squirt it all over and it'll really suck into that, right? And uh, yeah, and once this dries, it is gonna be super hard. So there we go, we'll let it dry. Now here I wanna make the stalagmites and I'm gonna use my paper towel again. I'm gonna just spray water on it. And I'm gonna use the same basic techniques that I use for the rock, right? Except for the stalagmites, I'm gonna kinda of twist it into a point, right? And uh, see, I've got the cardboard base like I did the rock. Just glue it on there, full strength glue. Kind of spread it out. And yeah, you can just use these same techniques for this kind of stuff. So I'll use some TP and put it around the base there. So it kind of blends into the base. And see how easy that is to work with the water? So simple and easy. Twist to the top a little bit there. And there we go. I have a great slagmite. Then I'm just going to add some glue on there. And just that'll just soak in there. And once this dries, it'll harden up just like the rock. This is a, such an easy technique to do. And it really is a lot less mess than trying to do the uh, flower technique, you know, with the paper mache and all that kind of stuff. All right. Here is my rock, and it is hard. 
but I'm also going to reinforce it a little bit with some extra white glue. So I'll just put that on full strength. And uh, what I'll do is let's use a brush with a little bit of water on it and just spread it out over the surface. And that'll help make the uh, surface extra hard. So yeah, this is just such a simple way to make uh, paper mache. And what I like is, you know, the paper towels and toilet paper give you much more texture than like, you know, newspaper, right? So here is a double stalagmite I did. And uh, it's just the same as I did the other one, the single one. I just added a smaller one to, to the larger base and just paint the glue on there just like I did with the rock. And this will just harden it, you know, harden it up and make it extra strong for your games. So yeah, wait till we get these painted up. They're going to look great. And uh, yeah, that's just a, such an easy, uh, simple technique, you know, as far as the uh, paper mache goes. So I got a bunch of these finished and I just let them dry on a plastic cutting board. And that's perfect because they'll just pop right off of there when they're dry. So yeah, these are all the different shapes I came up with. So yeah, just super easy to do. And this was just a short period of time to do all this. All right, so here we go. This is hardened. I want to add a little more detail to it. I'm going to use a sand. This is a regular sand, so it has different size aggregate, and it means it's not play sand where it's all smooth. It has different size pebbles and that kind of thing in it. So I'm just going to put some glue on. I'm not covering the whole thing, just little spots on the rock there. And then I'll just cover it with this sand. I call it construction sand, uh, but it's I think it's called standard sand. So I'll just cover that up and let it dry. And now that it's dry, you can see that, you know, certain areas of the rock have that like irregular uh, texture on it. So that's a really nice effect there and just super easy and cheap. One of these bags will last you for your crafting life, right? Or you can just get sand outside. So here this, here's the stalactite and uh, I'm just putting some on the base. So yeah, there we go. And here they are. It's all dried. So yeah, just uh, really nice. Now we'll paint those up. Now that we're all sprayed black, or you could paint it black with black acrylic paint, I'm going to use some different colors, gray, uh, burnt sienna, and a tan, okay? And I'm just going to get the gray on there, put some, uh, dapple some burnt sienna on there, and then some tan. And see that kind of muddiness on there really gives like the colors of a rock. You know, you don't just want gray, you want kind of a mix of colors that are in a natural rock. And I think that really does a great job on that. So same with the uh, stalagmites or stalactites, I guess, depending where <laughs> where in the cave they are, right? So yeah, just paint those up the same way. The gray and then get some burnt sienna and uh, some tan. And see how nice and muddy that is. Really looks like a kind of natural rock there. And then we'll just let that dry up and uh, move on to our last step. Now we really want to bring that detail out right now. This is dried and I'm using a dry brush technique, which is just a light gray and just get a little bit of it on the brush and just kind of flick it on the surface and see how all that texture comes out. All that toilet paper that we scrunched up comes out and looks like folds in the rock and that kind of thing, as well as the sand on there, right? So it looks so great and see all that detail popping out. Just really awesome. And so just keep dry brushing that on there to get all that detail popping out. And uh, last one here, the double one here. So yeah, just it's just a, a really easy technique. You just flick it on there and see all that uh, detail popping out, how we twisted that toilet paper. Really looks like uh, stalagmites, right? Cool. All right, last step. For our very last step, we're gonna use a wash, and this is just black acrylic paint, a little bit of soap and water, right? And you wanna thin it down quite a bit. I'm just gonna paint it on here and see it's very wet. It, it just runs like water. And what that's gonna do is bring out all those uh, indents into the piece, right? And we'll do with the slag might also. But uh, yeah, it's kind of the opposite of the dry brush, right? The dry brush brings out the highlights, but the wash brings out the recessions, right? So there we go, we'll let that dry up and uh, then we'll show you what it looks like. Here are all my pieces washed and you can see it really adds that last extra touch to these pieces. It really brings out the, uh, the shadows in these and really uh, gives them a three-dimensional effect. 
Hey friends, I want to talk a little bit about the downside of this, right? The, really the downside is only the waiting for it to dry. Okay, sometimes people want it now and it's really hard to wait for that. Uh, but I, there are some things you can do to speed up the drying process, right? And here's a few things I found that work really well. One is uh, just a simple fan, right? Just put it in front of a fan. That speeds up the drying process considerably, right? Another thing is the winter. In the winter, put it in front of a heating vent. That really helps. Also, uh, in the summer, you can put it in your car and the heat uh, coming through the windows, you know how it heats up your car? That actually speeds the drying process for the, uh, the paper mache pieces too. So there are several ways you can do to uh, speed it up. You could also put it into um, an oven. I don't recommend that because you could forget about it. You know, you could leave it in there too long, that kind of thing. In a car, the temperatures get higher, but they're not gonna get high enough that you have to worry about it. You could just leave it in there, not worry about it. In an oven, you gotta, you gotta you know, pay attention to it and all that kind of thing. So I would be careful with using an oven. That's a possibility on a very low, 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 low setting. That's a possibility too, but I wouldn't recommend that. I'd do either the fan method, the car method, or the heating vent method. So all those work really well to speed up the drying process for your new paper mache pieces. Let's look at a cave tile set up here with uh, all our paper mache pieces. And this is a uh, floor mat that I use for the cave. But yeah, you can see we got the stalagmites, we got the boulders. Also in the background there, I have a cave entrance that I did essentially the same way. It's just a frame made out of cardboard, uh, hot glued together, and then just paper mache technique over it. So really cool. So our adventurers enter the cavern and you can see the nice scale and everything and how well this terrain really looks. I mean, it looks as good as, you know, foam that you would carve, I think. It looks really great. And uh, here we have the ambush where the monsters leap out and everything. But there we go. That's what the terrain looks like on the table. So really super cheap and easy that anybody, anybody can do this. So I hope you guys were inspired by this video. Take care. Hey craft friend, I've been doing these techniques for years and next video, was, I know we did a lot of basic techniques this time, but next video I'm going to show you how to make a rocky hill. So even a more advanced technique, uh, which is just as simple, easy and cheap. Okay. But I've been doing this technique for years and I have many videos that, that I use it in. So check out these other videos and uh, you'll see me using this paper mache technique to get great results, great cheap results that look good at your table. So I'll see you next time at the DMs Craft.